Hey, what's going on, guys? Today, I'm going to give you guys an update on the 54 gallon Angelfish and Discus Planet tank. So, the tank right now has been overgrown with a lot of the plants. I do need to do a trimming today, so you'll see a lot of the footage of me just kind of cleaning the tank a little bit while we talk about the updates on this tank. So, let's catch you guys up with the tank. So, first off, there is a huge reduction in livestock in this tank. So, let me kind of go through what's been going on for the past month or so with the fish. So let's start off with the Altums. So I have five Altums total um, from the original uh, tank in the living room. I did move three of them in here and I tried to do my best guess and pair off two of them. And the other two are actually in the garage uh, for a breeding project to see if we can kind of get some breeding going. And since then I have not seen any breeding or pairing action. Um, the other thing was they're getting along really well, but I have not seen any motion or anything related to actually even attempting to lay eggs. So it could be that they're either both males or both females, or they might not be old enough. So we'll probably keep these guys in probably another couple of weeks. And if not, I'm probably going to end up swapping one of the uh, angelfish with another one just to see if there's another pair or another possible a plan would be adding a third uh, angelfish into that tank and seeing if uh, two of them will pair off and push one into the corner kind of like you know what we kind of saw like a few months ago when I was showing you guys that there was a possible pair going on uh, where two of them would push all the other three into the corner I'm probably 90% sure that they were trying to pair off but um, after a couple weeks um, they kind of just started swimming together again so I wasn't really sure what was going on there. So we'll see what happens with those two pairs. Oh man, so let's move on to the discus. So I have five total wild caught discus plus the one domestic uh, red covered discus. Now four of the wild caught discus in here are no longer in this tank. One of them did actually die. And the other three are actually in quarantine tank right now in the garage. So before when there was just a wild caught discus in this tank, uh, they seem to be getting along pretty well except for the one little guy that kept getting picked on um, it just seemed like it was just normal um, you know kind of just pecking water just to figure out who was the boss uh, but once I took down the tank in the living room and I ended up moving the three angelfish and the red cover discus into this tank I noticed that the wild caught discus started to act a little bit funny they started to one by one kind of just dash around the tank really fast this is known as like dashing symptom with the sign of dashing, there's normally three things that are associated with that. And one was an ammonia spike in the tank. Two, um, some sort of gill flukes or some sort of parasite that's affecting them in terms of the gills for breathing. Or an electrical component failure in the tank where it's causing some sort of electrical current. So let's start with the ammonia spike. So in terms of the livestock, I basically double the bio load in this tank instantly when I introduced the... Uh, fish into here without doubling the bio load in the media portion of it. Now with the domestic fish, they're probably less sensitive to that change. So with wild caught discus, they need really pristine kind of water condition and any parameter spikes uh, will affect them first. So since these guys are wild caught, they were the first ones to show the symptoms of that. So the second theory is gill flukes or something else that's probably in the tank. Um, that could be introduced from the domestic strain of discus mixing with the wild strain. Now the other four discus were showing signs of breathing really hard while they were kind of just dashing around. Um, so if something got into the gills, uh, that could probably cause them to do that. Or it could have been the ammonia spike, which could have caused ammonia burn in the gills, which could have led to them breathing hard. And the third theory is an electrical component fail um, in terms of the heater, the pump um, in the tank. And the only reason why I actually brought this up is because I've actually had a lot of cobalt uh, heaters fail on me. And in here, I do have a cobalt heater. And in the past, I've had one heater basically every time I would put my hand in there, it would just shock me. There was just basically creating an electrical current in the tank and... The fish seemed like they were doing fine, uh, but the heater was just defective. Another time I had a heater overheat where it would just basically just kept heating the tank up to like 90 something. Um, and the heater just got real, really hot. Um, and pretty much I noticed it in the red zone. I just kind of turned it off and just unplugged it. And from that point on, I couldn't set it down any lower. It just kept, you know, wanting to be at like 96 or something like that, very high. And that was a trash heater pretty much. And I had to throw that away. 
And probably the scariest one I've had was when I had a heater explode in the actual tank, which cracked the heater. And these heaters are really indestructible. They're not glass or anything like that. They're made out of a very hard material, but pretty much um, it exploded and it cracked. And basically the components inside were just getting hit with water and it was getting shorted. So a bunch of like just this electrical smell just came from the tank. It smelled like just burnt like, uh, electrical components for the people who know what I mean by that like it just was so bad and luckily I found that out really fast and I unplugged it because that could have just been a fire hazard it was all these uh, slim profile uh, heater um, it was different uh, wattage it wasn't all the same like 200 watt 300 watt versions but it was all different versions that uh, failed on me so um, I'm not trying to say bad things about cobalt because I've had heaters fail uh, in the past that were you know eheims and other stuff like that uh, that cracked and you know exploded etc but um, that was one of the reasons why I kind of added that into a possibility of um, you know the fish kind of going crazy but you know I suck my hand in this tank all the time I'm not getting electrocuted I'm looking at you know the actual numbers on the heater looked fine um, I didn't really test for current in the water columns because I don't really have a meter to test but I could probably just end up using one of my probes um, that I could test you know components on to see if there's some sort of current going through it I could probably do that I'll probably do that later after this video actually just to spot check that out of those three theories I'm probably a hundred percent sure it's due to the ammonia spike the reason because of that is once I remove those three uh, discus and put them into the quarantine tank they stop dashing around instantly. The water in there um, is, you know, clean. And, and for that bile load, it definitely can handle those three discus in there for sure. And inside of the main tank, you know, the, the one remaining uh, wild caught discus in here isn't dashing around. So I'm pretty sure I just need to reintroduce the fish back into the tank one by one and let the bile media in the tank kind of build up for that. So as a precaution, I am treating those three wild caught discus for actual possible gill flukes and I already treated the main tank once I removed those three uh, discus for possible gill flukes in the main display tank as well already so that tank is already good to go now I'm just kind of focusing on treating the wall caught discus outside and once they're good I'm going to go ahead and introduce them one by one back in here allowing time for the bio load to build up for the new livestocks also future plans I'm going to take another two of these uh, autumn angels and put them into um, the tank outside to see if I can quickly try to form a pair just because I just want to attempt to breed an autumn angelfish pair along with you know my discus pair there it's just kind of one of the goals I want to set for myself uh, to see if it's actually could be possibly done and plus autumn angels are a little bit harder to get tank raised a lot of them are wild caught so I would like to kind of just spread the tank raised version of autumn angels around and that would be pretty cool um, these guys are f1 uh, autumn so they are basically a spawn of a uh, wild caught pair so they are considered tank rays right now all right guys i hope you guys enjoy this week's update if you guys aren't subscribed yet make sure you guys are subscribed and like always until next time guys peace